uh, injury report. Mitch was on it. Um, he's doing fine for the most part and should be ready to go. So that's all I got for you. You see the production of Jacoby. Obviously, his status is uncertain, but immediate impact in week one. How has he kind of changed things a little bit for their offense? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a player I've I have a lot of respect for you know playing him in the division for a few years and watching him grow and develop and um, very physical football player at the at the wide receiver position which is uh, those two don't always go hand in hand he's extremely involved in the run game and um, he's he's a great route runner and um, I have a ton of respect for his game. What have you learned about Deontay Hardy as a person as you've gotten to know him more and more? What do you say? What, what have you learned about Deontay as a person? Yeah, um, uh, he comes across as a quieter um, player, um, but he's he's not as quiet as he leads on, and he's um, very smart. And I don't think people realize how smart he is. And uh, I know he's got a, a young family around him here in Orchard Park, and um, just cool to talk life with him a little bit and and get to know the, the person inside of the helmet. When did you start to see him? Sometimes that's natural when a guy gets to yeah. a team. When was it for him? Well, I think I think he's still quiet. It's just more of like if you can, he just kind of has, kind of subtle makes subtle comments, and he's got a little bit of a sense of humor to him, also a little bit witty, you know. So um, he's sharp. Right. Well, the one thing I've seen with Christian is he is extremely quiet off the field, but um, the job calls for him to communicate on the field, and, and he has he has embraced that. Um, and sometimes that makes um, you know one who's not maybe um, prone to be loud and boisterous off the field. It makes people uncomfortable t to stretch oneself. But in this case. Um, he does what he needs to do in terms of what's what's asked and what's uh, what's expected. So, um, I've been very happy with um, with him doing that. Do you feel like he's made any specific jumps from year one to year two that like stand out to you? Like anything he's particularly done well compared to like learning from his Well, he's healthy. Uh, we can start there. He missed a number of games last year, and um, so availability is key. And um, he's picked up right where he left off last year. He was he showed um, ability last year and. Um, some of the same things you guys are seeing. It's listen. It's one game, though, you know. So it's a day-to-day uh, -day approach and game-to-game -game approach. So we just have to stay after it. The offense used 12 personnel at one of the highest rates in Week One. What gave you the confidence just to lean into that so much to open the season? Well, I think again the combination of, of Dawson and Dalton. Um, you know, two good football players with similar yet slightly different skill sets, um, and. Uh, you know, I think there's, the tight end position is valuable to any offense. And, and so um, it's about mixing and matching from time to time, how it matches up against a particular opponent, um, just game plan wise as well. How does somebody like Matt Milano help Terrell Bernard you know, when you're first starting, you know, middle linebacker? How does somebody like Matt help Terrell in those, navigate some of those situations? Yeah, I mean, Matt's seen um, uh, a number of snaps of football uh, in a Bills uniform. and because of that in the NFL. And so the experience is, there's no substitute for experience. And, uh, you know, Terrell um, did some good things in the game uh, last week. And then there's some things collectively that um, he and we need to get better at. And that just comes through uh, being young and, and, and making some of those mistakes. So he's got to grow from it. And, uh, and those two need to <clears throat> be in the film room together, as I know they are, and um, do some things together when, you know, coaches aren't around kind of on their own in terms of improving their game. Eric said that he pulled Terrell aside to tell him how good of a job he did. I mean, to go out there, do all the pre-snap stuff, and then, you know, play. Obviously, there's some things that didn't maybe go the way he wanted, but yeah. did you notice at all him improving over the course of the game and getting more comfortable post-snap? Yeah. I mean, you could see the confidence building, and when you go out there, I mean, well, I don't care whether you're first-time junior high player or high school or then in college and now in the NFL it's the same like for the first time I mean you go out there and it's 
a little, you're a little anxious um, until you say, hey, no, I can, I can do this. And it takes some plays, some confidence building plays to do that. And I think he had a few of those early in the game. And, and, um, and then ones after that, he, want, you know, he, he wants back. But again, it's just, hey, can you do it? And once you realize, hey, no, I can do this. I belong out here. It just allows you to free up a little bit more and start to flow. When Ed plays the way that he did, I think it was six pressures, you know, just beating the backfield almost all evening, what does that do for your defense? Oh, it's huge. When you're, when you're starting three technique and impact a game, um, we need that every week. As Ed continues to grow, um, that's what we expect from him and need from him, quite frankly. So I've been very pleased with how hard he's worked, his attention to detail, his focus right now. And, and um, you know, if he continues with that and, and another player that continues to learn on the job, um, he'll take his game you know, each and every week to a, to a new level. What makes the Bills home opener so special? I think any home game in, in Orchard Park uh, is special. It really is. I mean, it's an uh, incredible atmosphere, unlike any around the NFL, maybe you know, similar in some ways to, to Lambeau. Um, the, the environment, the um, cookouts that are going on, it's, it's, I really enjoy you know, driving in, into the stadium in the morning and watching people you know, hanging out, having fun, spending time with family, spending time with friends. And then um, it's not like at some stadiums where you know, at kickoff it's half, half full and it's going to fill in a little bit. They're here right at, at the start, which I love. <laughs> I'd love to, maybe on the way home. After a win, maybe. You talked to Eric Washington and Jordan Poyer both some about the run defense and their perspective on it yesterday. How have you seen just the defense as a whole kind of attacking that in practice over the last couple of days? Yeah, um, it's it's one of those deals where you got to be intentional about it and uh, and purposeful, and um, you've got to have the right mindset as well. And um, you know, it's a it's an all day affair in terms of if you know you stop it for the first couple of series or the first couple of quarters, and then if you all of a sudden you let up, you relax for one play for one second and, and you give up a big one that, that impacts, you know, the game or impacts the numbers statistically in terms of what you're able to do against the run. So um, it's got to be an all day affair. Josh and some of the captains have talked about this message of doing more than their 111 and kind of trying to spread that. And a lot of people are curious what you think of that because obviously the 111 is something you preach a lot, like that message that they're saying do even more. Yeah, no, I, I embrace, um, I support. We talk about those things. Uh, we, I meet with those guys and, um, you know, things that they come up with and they vet them through me and I vet some things through them. It's a good partnership that way and um, appreciate their leadership. Um, and I think anytime you can do more than your 111, I think it's great, um, just as long as it, it doesn't get you in trouble, right? You got let's take care of the 111th in, a, in natural order first and then doing more second. So. Um, I think that's uh, that's good for us. When we were talking about Josh Bunch on Wednesday, you mentioned how you're attacking it from a bunch of different methods. I was curious just of his turnovers. I was curious just big picture. How have you seen that kind of evolve as you've been a coach of, you know, now there's so many ways to work with a guy more holistically and he's yeah. stuck on something versus just like, hey, stop doing this. Like, right. what has that been like in your coaching journey? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when, when you were younger, when I was growing up, um, you know, you were – you were yelled at. That was the one way, right? You were yelled at, and you, and you ex were expected to get it corrected. Um, so it's it's amazing how through technology and and beyond other resources, we're able to attack challenges. Um, and and I think the other piece is knowing the knowing the player, knowing the person. Um, not everybody responds, um, and this is separate of Josh's situation, but responds. To this certain, to a certain type of coaching. So, I think knowing the the person you're dealing with is highly important as well.